Awesome, awesome, awesome. Are y'all ready for the Word of God today? Ah, oh, four of you, that's awesome, okay. Are y'all ready for the Word of God today? Yeah. Amen. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Oh, man, we put on an event this Friday night for all of our volunteers here at the church. We call them a dream team, and we had a, just a crazy time. Amen. How many of you were at the Dream Team Banquet, the Hillbilly Oscars? That's what I'm talking about right there, I'll tell you. Uh, I don't know if anybody will see me the same. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> they don't have pictures or anything they're going to throw up. Uh, but anyway, God is good. And uh, I'll go ahead and tell you we're in a series called Bubble Busters. If you're a first-time guest with us today, God bless you. Can we give all of our first-time guests a big hand clap? This is actually... This has actually been one of those series that uh, I'll, I'll probably myself go back and watch the sermons uh, because of the content that the Lord's been laying on my heart. Uh, so if this is your first time, maybe the first time you're back, maybe you've been on vacation or something like that, you wasn't watching online because you're a heathen or something and you just skip church when you're on vacation. Uh, I'm just kidding, by the way. All right. Uh, <laughs> no, but, but if you haven't watched the first two sermons in this series, go back and watch the first two sermons. I believe that God will speak to your heart. Uh, today, my sermon is based on a response from last week's services. And uh, I began to talk about last week in the services, the characteristics of God. And buddy, I want to tell you, I, I made a statement something like this, you know, when, when you really follow God, you have the characteristics of Jesus in your life. You know, so all the characteristics of Jesus begin to bubble up in your life, and I begin to mention those characteristics, and I hit this one specific thing. And I want to tell you, I was shocked in my spirit. I was shocked that I got so much response from this specific topic when I mentioned it because I believe it's the number one thing that Christians, I'm talking about people who have, have kind of left the sin life, left the old life, come into the new life. This is the number one thing we struggle with. So I'm going to open with a statement like this. Forgiveness is not optional, it's mandated. Now I'm going to bust some bubbles today. I met a gentleman out in the lobby earlier and I said, do you have your steel toe boots on? I wore mine today. Come on, somebody right there. Look at those Chelsea's. Hallelujah. But I, I, wore, I wore my steel toe boots because I'm going to tell you, I, through the word of God, may step on a few toes today and I'm not going to apologize for it. Amen? So let me ask you a question. How many of you have ever struggled with forgiving someone else? If you look around, you don't have to, but if you look around, 75 to 80% of the congregation raise their hand. The other 25 to 20% are liars. So, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Especially if what they did to you was very, very bad. And I can't really understand how the Word of God would tell us that forgiveness is a mandate. It's a must. It's not optional. I, I can remember when forgiving people was hard for me. It was tough for me. But today, if I had to title my sermon, this is probably what they'll put on Facebook and all the social media feeds that we have, I would probably title it uh, the thing you can't withhold. The thing that you can't withhold. Look at your neighbor right now and say, the thing. No, 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 no. We don't say it like that around it. Compassion. The thing you can't withhold. Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. 14 and 15. We're just going to go on a journey today. If you'll give me, you know, your attention for the next 25 minutes or so, I'll try my best uh, to wrap this thing up. Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. Jesus just taught the disciples how to pray. It was the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Y'all know the Lord's Prayer, right? So right after the Lord's Prayer, verse 14, Jesus makes this statement. And he says this, Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. He says, and when you pray, make sure you forgive the faults of others so that your Father in heaven will also forgive you. Verse 15, listen to this. But if you withhold forgiveness from others, your Father withholds forgiveness 
from you. Father, would you help me today? God, these are, this is one of those sermons that I really need the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit to be very evident in this room. I pray, God, for understanding in the minds and the hearts of the people who are listening right now, watching in online, listening in this room. I pray, God, that you'll give us the understanding through your scriptures. Maybe you will simplify it enough where we understand that this is a mandate that you literally spelled out to your disciples, if we do not forgive others, you cannot forgive us. It doesn't mean that you don't want to, but we tie your hands. So, Father, today, would you just bless me? Bless me, help me, because this is all about you this morning. I want to step out of the way. I want you to have your will to be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me tell you a story just real quick. I want you all to just kind of come into my life just for a moment. I can remember, like seriously, this was probably back in 2005. I can remember preaching Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15 for the very first time. I can remember it. Somebody asked me how. Oh, okay, I'm glad you asked me how. I remember how or, or why I preached this or when I preached this, not how, but when. I remember when I preached this because I was ambushed at the end of the service by this little lady. And when I say ambushed, I'm talking about in my face, spitting in my face, letting me know that what I just preached was wrong. She later proceeded to tell me all of the bad things that someone had done to her. I mean, when I tell you she had told me all of the bad things that she, someone had done to her, I mean, my face was white by the time she got done talking. You don't understand what my daddy did to me. You don't understand what my uncle did. You don't understand. And I'm going, oh, my gosh. I, I was shocked. Honestly, in that moment, I, I, I remember leaving the service, scratching my head going, Am, am, I, am I wrong? Did I misinterpret the scriptures? And it caused me, as a very young pastor, because that was my first year in the pastorate, it caused me to really dig deep into the Word of God on the subject of forgiveness. Because I thought to myself, God, if I had went through the same thing that this lady had went through, would I preach this in the same context in which I preached it today? Would I say the same things? Would I be as bold as what I said? And the Lord simply said, yes, because forgiveness is Jesus. I began to study the scriptures. I began to read scriptures like forgive each other as in Christ God forgave you, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. We've got to forgive others in Christ just as he forgave us forgive as the Lord forgave you, right? Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. I'm just quoting these. You guys can write them down. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Luke chapter 6, verse 37. And then it follows it up with what she just quoted. Luke 6, 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, right? All of those types of things. So let me ask you a question. Do you think that the forgiveness of God is free? Do you think that the forgiveness of God to us is free? Do we have to work for the forgiveness of God? Huh? Do we have to work? Some, some people are saying yes. Some people are saying no. This is why I like preaching. This is why I like it. Listen, the forgiveness of God, now he paid the price for our sin. It wasn't free on his end, but for us, we call upon the name of the Lord. He saves us. We confess our sins over to him, and the Bible says that he is just, and he's faithful to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. woo -wee! Isn't that awesome? So, so, so if that is the truth, why do we make people work for the things we got for free? Why do we charge someone for something that we ourselves got for free? I will never have to forgive anyone uh, uh, else more than God himself had to forgive me. 
I'll never have to forgive anybody more than God actually forgave me. And I believe once we understand that and once we get that into our psyche and we understand the true forgiveness of God and the weight and the pressure that came with the forgiveness that he offered to us, when we understand that, I'm telling you, it becomes easier for us to forgive others. Do you understand the weight and the pressure of your sin that was forgiving by Jesus on the cross? See, the problem with most Christians today is we don't want to do what Jesus did. We don't want to crawl up on a cross and crucify ourselves daily and carry our cross around saying, I don't care what you've done to me. I'm going to forgive you because I love you. Not because I have to, because I love you. There's a difference. And I'm going to tell you, when you get to that point where you're no longer looking for an I'm sorry, and instead you're looking to be free, you found a deep place in Jesus. Because when you forgive, it frees you. We'll talk about that in a minute. But it frees you. But when we refuse to forgive others, listen, I, I heard a man say this. I was going to take credit for it, but I, the Lord just convicted me. His name's Jeremy Foster. I don't know if some of you know him. He's a pastor. But he said this statement, and I thought it was a really good statement. He said, when we refuse to forgive people, we're burning the bridge that we must walk across to get to heaven. When I, heard, I get chill bumps every time I think of it, Right? I mean, it's like, I'm burning the bridge. So you're telling me, yeah, you're hurting you more than you're hurting them. Unforgiveness leads to bitterness. We could talk about it. So here's what I want to do today. I want to really clearly define what I'm talking about. And I'm going to take you into Matthew chapter 18. We're going to read verses 23 through 35. I know it's a lot of scripture, but that's what you came to church for today. Amen. Not about fluff, it's about scripture. Let me give you some background of this. So Jesus is with his disciples, and he begins to tell parables. Peter, which I really am amused that Peter is the one that actually asked this, but Peter says, Jesus, how often should I forgive a brother? And Jesus proceeds to tell Peter, well, Peter, if uh, your brother sins against you, you should forgive him. Well, how often? How many times? 70 times seven in a day. 400, you know what he said? 490 times a day, if need be. If they sin against you, or if they do something to you, and then turn around and do the very same thing again, I forgive you. Oh, I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. It probably should be some of the most used language that we have in our Christian vocabulary. I forgive you. I forgive you. Boy, she's sure messing up all the time. I forgive you. God bless you. I forgive you. But I want to take you into what they call my subtitle in my Bible says the parable of the unforgiving servant. Let's go in the word today and we're going to spend the majority of the rest of our time together just in the scriptures. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven, this is Jesus talking. It's like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. Now, you guys understand that Jesus is, is speaking in a parable so that people can understand the principles of the kingdom of God. So he's saying this king has come, and he's come to settle accounts with his servants, just like you and I. He will come back, and he will settle the accounts of his servants, verse 24. And when he had begun to settle accounts... One was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. Somebody say 10,000 talents. <laughs> Do y'all know how much 10,000 talents is? Okay. One, <laughs> that's a good one. A little quirky, ain't you? That's good. A witty. I love it. I love it. One talent I'm going to get nerdy on you just for a minute, but you've got to understand the concept of this parable. One talent equals 6,000 denarii. You say, well, in, in their culture, it, it would be almost like we're talking dollars and cents here now, okay? This is their terminology of their money. 
one denarii, and I don't know if I'm saying that right, but one denarii equals one day's wage. So, if the man owed one talent, he would owe the master 6,000 days worth of work. Now, if you wanted to get your calculator out, you could pull it out and go 365 divided by 6,000. I wonder, oh my goodness gracious. But no, 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 he didn't owe him one talent. He owed him 10,000 talents. 10,000 talents is 60 million days of work. Somebody say, somebody has some good credit. Come on. Somebody has some good credit. This person was living the high life. There's no way you could be 60 million days in debt to a master and not live like a king yourself. 60 million days. I want you to just say it because when when we break into what I'm about to teach, it's going to make a lot more sense. Say 60 million days. Could you imagine? I don't even know how many years. I mean, my goodness gracious. In other words, the man owed a debt that he couldn't pay. Sound familiar? He owed this debt, and there's no way in human form that he could have paid the debt in which he owed. Go on to verse 25. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and his children, and everything that he had, and that payment be made. In other words, you're going to serve me for the rest of your life, you and your household and everything that you have, because of the debt that, uh, that, that you owe me. You owe me debt. Y'all with me? All right, let's, let's keep going. I don't want to get quiet in here. Verse 26. The servant, listen to how the the servant responded. The servant therefore fell down before him saying, Master, have patience with me and I will pay you all. Then the master, this is the good thing. Jesus is painting a picture about himself. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion. He released him and forgave him the debt. My goodness gracious. 60 million days, forgave it. You, it. It's almost like taking every bit of the debt that you have. I'm talking about, let's say you owed $60 million. That'd be just making a dollar a day, right? $60 million. Let's just take that and someone looking at you going, hey, you know what? Because you fell down before me and you begged for mercy and your heart is in the right place. Guess what? I'm going to rip up every bit of the debt that you have. How many of you would like that? Come on. Hopefully my banker is watching this right now in Jesus' name. (laughs) Moved with compassion. That's who Jesus was. That is the forgiveness of God. What Jesus is painting a picture in this parable of is this is the the, uh, the, the gravity. This is the, the picture of my forgiveness. This is who it is. This is who I am. Jesus was painting this beautiful picture. Let us go to verse 28. But the servant, you got to watch out. But the servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. Now, how many days' wages is a hundred denarii? A hundred. This man was just forgiven 60 million days wages. He goes out and he finds someone that owes him 100 days wages. And it's a really cool story. I just want you to read it. Those of you that have never read it, I mean, just listen here. And he laid hands on him and he took him by the throat. In other words, he was angry with the man because he owed him all of this money. It would be almost like a, a, a third of the year. Like four months worth of work. He, this, this guy owes me four months. I mean, if this guy owes me three and a half, four months worth of work, by golly, he's going to give it to me right now. Because he's in debt to me. He owes me. Anybody ever had an attitude that somebody owed you something? Anyway, let's keep, let's keep going. All right, verse 29. 
He grabs him by the throat, verse 28. He says, pay me what you owe. Now listen, sounds very familiar. Look at verse 29. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and he begged him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you all. Verse 30, key verse. And he would not but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. Verse 31, so when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Verse 32, then his master, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? Jesus is sitting here and he's like, my goodness gracious, do you understand the magnitude of what is happening? I am going to forgive people of their sins. This is, this is a parable and a breakdown. I am about to forgive people of their sins, but there will be some that will take the sins that others had committed against them and hold it against them and not forgive them. And they will not allow that debt to be paid through my blood, through the price that I had already paid. And when I find that out, I'm going to look at those people and say, you wicked servant. Guys, we, we simply don't have the right to withhold forgiveness. You say, well, you don't know what happened to me. I've never been through some really, really tough times. I've been treated bad by people. I've been talked about. There's been people that spreaded rumors about me that went on for a couple years just to find out that they were not true. I've held my ground. I have forgiven. I've been through a little bit of stuff, but I hadn't been through some stuff like some of you have been through some stuff. I haven't. But I will tell you, we do not have the right to withhold forgiveness. We're too much in debt. We're too much in debt to him to be holding debts over others. Our debt that was paid was so bigger than the debt that needs to be paid in that relationship. The debt that needs to be paid within that friendship. The debt that needs to be paid. But the kicker of this parable is verse 34 and 35. And his master was angry. Now who's angry? His master was angry. And here's what he did to him. He delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. In other words, you can't pay the debt. So you'll be delivered to the torturers so that you can try to repay, but you can't repay because you have to have the blood of Christ to pay in full all the debt. You got to have Jesus. And then he makes a tremendous statement in verse 35, and he says, so my heavenly Father also will do to you. Now, I thought God was a just God. I thought God was a loving God. I thought God, no matter what we did, I mean, surely to goodness, God knows our heart. God knows our heart. Pastor Jamie, don't be preaching this. God knows my heart. He knows my turmoil. He knows the nights that I sat up and I slept or didn't sleep and I cried all night. He understands. Yes, you're right. He does. He does. And he's there for you. And he loves you. And he's paid a price for you. But as he's paid a price for you, you have to forgive others. If not, you tie the hands of God in your life and forgiveness can't come to your house so good. Listen, listen, because there's, there's a key part. I want y'all to look at the screen right now, or if you're online, I want you to focus on that, and I want to read verse 35 in full, and I just want y'all to correct me if I'm wrong or say amen if I'm right. So my heavenly Father also will do to you if each of you does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Okay, I got some no's and I got some amen's. This is the problem. <laughs> Listen to what it said. I skipped three important words in the scripture. I skipped over it. Because the scripture actually reads, so my heavenly father also would do to you if each of you, comma, from his heart, comma, does not forgive his brother his trespasses. The day, I'm telling you, this is very dangerous territory. When you begin to say out of your mouth, oh, I forgive them, I forgive them because I have to. If you forgive them because you have to, you don't want to, which means you've never forgiven them. 
Well, the Bible says to forgive them, and if the Bible says to forgive them, then I guess I have to forgive them. But I tell you one thing. Forgiveness, my friend, is a heart issue. Forgiveness of others is a mark of maturity, spiritual maturity. How miserable is the soul who holds on to a root of bitterness? How miserable you should be. God doesn't want you miserable. He wants you set free. And I pray by the end of this day today, you get set free and you, you, you muster up enough strength from the Holy Spirit that resides on the inside of you to forgive out of the love of your heart because you know that Jesus paid a debt that you could not pay. And now you should pay the debt with the blood of Christ over your life and say, I love you and I forgive you. And I want to tell you something. The Bible says that vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I, because, look, look for, forgiven people forgive people. Y'all ever heard that? Forgiven people forgive people. We freely forgive because we have been forgiven. Now, this is where I want to take us just for a moment because I want you to understand forgiving others sets you free more than it does them. But this is where I think we miss it. This is where it's going to get real because this is what some people in this room already know. Because I would probably, if I had a deep hurt and a deep wound and somebody did something really bad to me or bad to my children or I don't know what, what all it could be, but I would probably be thinking this. It's almost as if we forgive them. We're letting the other party off the hook for what they've done. Now, I'm going to hold on to this because I want them to remember for the rest of their life the pain they took me through. No, no, no. See, you got it backwards, and that's where the enemy's coming in and tricking your mind. Because the longer you hold on to it, the longer you think about it. You must understand, you, when you forgive someone, you don't let them off the hook. You say, well, I've, I've forgiven them, and I've reached out to them, and they won't talk to me. Well, good. You've done your job. You did your job as a Christian. <clears throat> Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Or I almost said it in the King James, saith the Lord. Because that's how I learned that scripture. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Either you forgive or you slowly poison your own mind and your own heart. And when you hold on to unresolved bitterness, we went through this for seven years of our life, me and my wife. We literally had a family member that we held on to unresolved bitterness for seven years. And I want to tell you, you know what we thought the whole time? We're the big people. We're not Christians. Bless God, she's in the wrong, we're in the right. I ain't saying nothing. When she calls me, maybe we'll have a phone conversation. Anybody else ever been that way? Come on, raise your hand if you've ever been that way. That is not Christ's way. That's not Christ's way. When you do that, you only hurt yourself. We're only hurting ourselves. I'm trying to set you free today. I'm trying to help you. So I, I think in closing, this is my first of six. When Jesus forgives us, two things happen. Write this down if you're taking notes. Put it in the chat uh, box if you want to. When Jesus forgives us, two things happen. The first thing that happens is, is Jesus cancels the past. He cancels the past. I think it's, is it Psalm 100? It's either Psalm 100 or Psalm 103. I can't remember. I should know because I'm the pastor. But it says, as far as the east is from the west, so has he removed our transgressions. 
In other words, if I get on Highway 70, and if Highway 70 was east, and Highway 70 went all the way around the world, okay, I could never catch up to the west if I just stayed on the eastbound lane. Are y'all with me? As far as the east is from the west, as far as you can see, he's removed those transgressions from us, those sins, those things in our life. He cancels the past. But here's the second thing that Jesus does when he forgives us. He disarms the enemy. He disarms the enemy. Now let me, we talked about Jesus, but now let me talk about us. When we release forgiveness, it does two things. Y'all know what it does? It cancels the past. Some people preach, forgive and forget, forgive and forget, forgive and forget. I don't know. I still remember some of the hard things that people said about me about 15 years ago. I still remember it, but it doesn't impact me the way that it did in the moment because God bless them, I forgave them. I may remember it, but it doesn't have the effects on my life the way that it once did because it got canceled through this thing called forgiveness. All of that hurt, all of that pain, all of that shame, all of that ridicule, that disgrace, everything that everybody had ever said about me, it's gone. I don't care, number one, because I know the truth. Number two, Jesus took that away from me when I forgave those people. You know the second thing that happens when we begin to forgive others? We disarm the devil. Sometimes with a root of bitterness or unforgiveness, what the devil has done is he has given you a spiritual gun with as much ammunition as you want, and he's saying, shoot, 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 shoot. I believe that it is time to disarm the devil. Come on, is anybody else in here? Come on, are, are, do you believe it's time to disarm the devil? Church, second closing of six. Forgiveness is an attitude, not an act. It's an attitude. And, and, and you know, I'm a leadership guy. I just really love leadership. The, you know, we teach a principle. Uh, your, your attitude determines your altitude. So whatever attitude that you have in your walk with Christ will determine the altitude that you go. It'll, it'll show you how low you're going to get, or it'll show you how high you're going to go. I think it's time for us to try, quit, quit trying to get lower and lower by hitting people underneath the belt. I'm not forgiving them. I'm not doing this. No, you need to be set free. I need to be set free. This is a choice, not a feeling. Well, I don't feel like forgiving them. Well, I believe, I bet you don't forgive love feel like forgiving them. I bet you don't. I didn't feel like forgiving those people who hurt me. But here's what I'll do. When I roll up into Kennett, Missouri, and I'm walking down Walmart aisle, and I see one of them, guess what I do? I don't do as most do. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Aisle five, Velveeta cheese. I didn't need any, but I'm getting it today. Hallelujah. I don't do that. I chase them. And some of them's like this. I've literally had this happen. And then I go, oh, man, she's going down the house. Running down the next aisle, coming around. <laughs> oh, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Because I love them. I love them. I love them. So third closing, I said I had six. I'm only going to do three. Remember this. Forgiveness is not optional. It's mandated. It's the thing you can't withhold. Let me pray with you today. Father, this has been tough. It's been tough for us. It's, it's good to talk about and it's all of that, but I, I know, I don't feel, I don't sense, I know that there's people, whether they're watching online right now or in this room, this can be very hard to chew. God, this would really bust our bubble. It, it, it's, it's hard to swallow. Because God is the meat of your word. It's how we should live. So today I just ask if there's anybody struggling in this room and they have a root of bitterness or a spirit of unforgiveness, God, I can't, I, I've tried through your word to just help them understand where you stand in the whole topic and the issue. God, I can't make them do anything. I just pray that you, the power of the Holy Spirit will come into our lives 
And God, would you, would you take us to the next level? Because I believe that there's a, there's a graduation period here. When you pass this, you graduate into higher heights, deeper depths, the Spirit of God. So, Father, if there's people struggling right now, pray over them. Right now, if you're struggling with some unforgiveness in your life, I just want you to pray between you and God right now. So, Father, you hear the prayers. Come on. He wants to hear your voice. He hears the cry of the righteous. He understands. He gets it. He sat in the garden of Gethsemane, and he cried so hard. The stress on his life was so much that blood began to come through the pores of his forehead, and he sweated blood because he knew the pressure of the sin, of the forgiveness that he was going to have to offer the whole world. Jesus, would you help them, give them strength? Maybe you're in this room, or maybe you're watching online right now, and you say, I get all that, but I haven't ultimately asked for forgiveness of my sin. I'm the guy, I'm the girl that's 60 million days in debt to God. And I need forgiveness. And here's the, here's the cool thing. If you today begin to cry out to God, all that debt that you have over your life, the sin in your life, the things you're going through in life, all of that debt will be paid in an instant when you call upon the name of the Lord with all of your heart. If that's you in this room today or online, Come on, would you just slip your hand up? Come on, nobody's looking around. Would you just slip your hand up? Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Just keep it up just for a moment. Thank you. Right there, I see you over here. See you up there. See you. I see you guys. Can we pray a prayer just real quick? Say this with me. Say, Jesus, I have a debt that I cannot owe or, or I cannot pay. I have a debt I cannot pay. I confess to you today all of my sins, my faults, all of that debt. Would you forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness? Today, God, your will be done in my life. I confess you as Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a big hand clap.